All right, welcome back everyone. Um, this is part four of our um, little game here. Um, I guess you can kind of call it a dungeon crawler. Um, the Our goal today is to basically, every time I spawn something, it does nothing. Uh, it has no collision with the player, um, or it does have collision with the player, is something that we're gonna fix. It does have collision with the zombies. Um, we're gonna fix up a few things, so. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our friendly zombie and we're going to drag it into the screen, into our friendly mobs Y sort, just so we can kind of test it in the future. Then we're going to go into it and then we're going to go into the script. And what we're going to do is um, the first thing we're going to do is add an area 2D. And we're going to add another area 2D. And we're going to add a collision for both. I'll duplicate that, add it here. And then we're going to give both of them a shape, a circle. And this one is going to be called Hostile Detector Detector. And so, this, what this is going to do is check if oh sorry this is the other one the hostile detector is going to check if an enemy zombie is in range and then if it is we're going to chase it right all right so the first thing we're going to check for is if the area is entered and if the area is entered um let me just check my reference here there's a few variables we're going to want to create um and we can kind of I'll kind of explain what each one does. The first one is pretty obvious, <laughs> the speed of our um, little zombie here. I'm gonna make it 30, which is a little slower than our other zombie, I believe. Let me just double check. Oh, it's the same, okay. We'll keep it the same, it's okay. And then we're also going to make, we're gonna make a variable called hostile. Um, I'll explain, I'll, I'll just write out all of them and then I'll explain what each one is for, and let me just, Check my reference to make sure I have it all. Okay. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add hostile to each object that we have so far. So we have two, three objects. We have the hostile zombie. We're going to want to go into here and add it here. We're going to want to go into our player as well and also add it here. So the, ho the, the player is not hostile. This is hostile zombie is hostile, so we're gonna make this the true. All right, so the, the reason we did that is because if the player enters our zone, we want to be able to check if it's the player or if it's the, a hostile object, essentially, if it's an enemy that we're going to be chasing after, right? Because this, is, this guy's on our team, so we want him to help us and not come at us, essentially, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is, we're going to check if chase is equal to false. And if it is, then we're going to get the area get parent dot name. Uh, no, sorry, not name. Hostile equals true. Um, then we're going to get target. We're going to set the target to the area dot get parent. So I'll explain what this is, the area dot get parent. So whenever another area, so the area entered is going to check for any other area 2D that's entering this area, right? So the hostile zombie has its own area 2D, this one, player collision. This one's checking for player collision. However, this will also work for the area entered. So whenever this area enters our friendly zombie here, same thing for the player. So let me open up the player. So, okay, our player doesn't have an area 2D yet. Um, but I believe in the in a bit, in a bit it will, <laughs> but yeah, it will. Um, there's another thing we're going to add. Um, but yeah, so once this area 2D enters this area, it's going to trigger this signal. It's gonna come here and we're gonna set that target to the area get parent, which is this guy, the hostile zombie, right? And then let's one more line of code I'm pretty sure I'm missing. Oh, yeah. Now we want to make sure chase is equal to true, right? And then what we're going to want to do 
is at a physics process. And if chase is equal to true, we're going to create direction, which is going to be equal to the target dot position. You know what? We can actually just go into here and just copy paste it. A friendly zombie. So the idea is the same as hostile zombie. So here we set the player and we're chasing the player at this direction by subtracting the player's position and our own position and then going to that position, right? The friendly zombie is doing the same thing, but the target is set the moment that area enters this area, right? So the moment the hostile zombie enters this area, this area will detect that, get that, that object, that node, and set it to target. So target is now an object that has been set. So it's it's important that you understand that the, the word object is used here because um, if there are any errors, Godot will use that wording uh, object. All right. Um, next thing we're going to want to do in order to avoid any errors, um, I actually did this before and I got this error and I realized it. If the... The reason we'll do this is because um, everything's going to have an HP, um, except for this guy. This guy will be kind of an explosion on site. Um, we can add HP to this, but essentially when the hostile zombie gets exploded or dies, what's going to happen here is I still ch chase is equal to true still, right? So chase is still equal to true. And it's going to try to find that direction and chase it, but it can't because the target no longer exists, right? The target get parent, it do doesn't exist anymore, right? So it's going to air. So another thing I forgot actually is to copy paste the move and slide, right? Yeah. So we want to move and slide towards the enemy that entered our area. So I want you to take a guess what we're going to do here. When the, the hostile enemy exits the area that we're chasing, they're supposed to be chasing, what are we going to do to avoid error? Out we're actually going to make it equal to false. Chase equal false now, right? That's it. This should avoid any errors. Next thing we're going to do is in this guy, this is going to be the hostile hit. So if you hit a hostile object, I'll make it a little smaller. Um, here we go. And we're going to do area entered one more time. And we're going to do this one. We're going to copy this guy right here. Sorry, we don't need that, that second line. But if the area.parent get hostile is true, so meaning we hit hostile and not the player, because if we hit player, we don't want to hit the player, right? We're going to do area. Oh, sorry. We're going to do area.getParent.hp. Uh, we'll do dot .health. We'll name it health minus equal five. And then we'll also queue free. So we'll destroy ourselves once we hit something. And obviously we need to give things health. So first thing we're gonna do is go to our hostile zombie and give it health. So we'll make it equal to five. Let me just double check that's what I did. Nope, I made it equal to 15. Let's try 15. Let's do that. All right, now I believe it should work. Let's see it. Boom, it works. So now every time I spawn something, it chases after the enemy. And obviously it doesn't do anything because we didn't set it to do anything. Um, in our process function, what we're gonna do is if health minus equals zero, you free. So if our health is any is smaller than or equal to zero, we'll be destroyed. So let's try that. Yeah, there we go. So now a few of them are getting destroyed now. So that's a good way to kind of kill the other zombies. There we go. All right. Um, that is not all we're going to do. Another thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to add knockback. Um, this will add a bit more oomph to our game. So what we have to do is add an area 2D into our player. So area 2D, add a collision. 
And what we're going to do is check hostile detector. And we're going to use body entered this time. Body entered is a bit different than um, area entered. The body entered is going to check for the body itself, so the kinematic body, and not the area body, right? So I'm going to make this into a circle, and I'm going to make it right around there. Make it that big, and then I might actually make this a bit smaller. All right, there we go. And now in here, there's a few things we're going to add. The first thing we're going to add is a knockback itself. So we're going to just say variable knock back is one word. I was just checking equals to vector two dot zero. So this is a position zero zero, right? So this is our knockback. So the knockback is zero essentially at all uh, to start, right? And in our, uh, we'll do the area body denture first. So if our, the first thing we want to do is to check if the enemy we just hit is a hostile. So to do that, what I'm going to do, no, you know what, because we just added this, we can do dot, um, if body dot hostile, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me just copy paste it. There we go. Equals to true. Then what we'll do is take the knockback equals to body dot knockback direction times 20, 120, sorry. Just double check my reference. So we're going to essentially take the knockback, or we're going to set the knockback equal to the body dot knockback direction. So in order to get the direction that we're being knocked back in, so if, a, if here's, our, here's our player and here's our enemy, right? So our enemy is going to hit our player and knock it back to this way, this direction. But in order to do that, we need to take our enemy and see which direction it was heading in the first place, right? Otherwise, there's no other way to know. So to do that, I'm going to go into our hostile zombie. I'm going to add another variable called hostile knock back direction. Just to actually make sure I don't get any errors, I'm just going to copy paste it. Okay, cool. I didn't do it wrong. And this one's going to start off as vector dot zero. All right. And now a good place to set this is not direction equals direction. So every time I chase the player, it's going to take that direction I'm running at and set the knockback direction the same, right? So that way I know which direction the knockback is essentially, right? Um, and I can't, I, just for reference, just so you know, I could not use direction here. So if I did body dot direction, it would not work because the variable direction is remade every time I call this physics process function. So it would not work. It would error, right? Um, it wouldn't error right away, but if I play it, it would error. So that's a good, it's a good way to think about it. All right, let me just we'll check I'm not missing anything. Um, Yep. Okay. That's good. Now we go back to our player. And now we're going to actually add the knockback. So there's two lines of code. Um, knockback equals knockback dot move toward vector two dot zero two hundred times delta knockback equals move and slide towards the knockback. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the vector zero, which is the initial spot that we're in, we're going to multiply it to that speed, and then we're going to move and slide towards that area, essentially. Right? So now if we play it, it should work. OK, or not. Let me see what's going on here. I think I don't think I'm missing anything. Let me double check. Let 
Let me double check that this hostile area is working. Ooh, it is not. Interesting. Okay. So body dot hostile equals true. All right, we're gonna debug this together. I'm gonna see if you can figure it out with me. So hostile. If the body hostile dot true. You know what? I'll do what I did in my code. My original code, what I did is I did a different way. So oops. So what I did is I did hostile in body dot name. So essentially if the word hostile is in the name of our thing, then that means that we're colliding with the hostile, right? Um, let's see if this works. Ooh, that's strange and doesn't work. All right, let's see what's going on here. Um, boop, boop, boop. Um, hostile zombie, knock back direction. Um, let me check my collision. Also, okay, let's make sure we set all that to one, one, one. Let's try one more time. Interesting. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pause the video real quick and figure this out and I'll be right back. Okay. Um, I figured out the problem. So it turns out kind of was working. The problem was the collision itself. So if, um, originally it was like this and I believe what was happening is it would only work on the top and bottom. But if I go to the left, it sometimes works. But it's because the collision essentially is a bit too big. So here we have to make it a little bigger in order for it to actually interact with all sides. However, that does make another bug, which is that the, the enemy doesn't always get destroyed. Sometimes it bounces off and it's still alive. Not always though, but that's okay. We'll fix that later. Um, so if you get that bug, it's because the area 2D collision body is too big. Um, all right, let's continue. Um, I think that's actually it. <laughs> so that is the end of our video. Um, there's nothing else I want to do. Um, there is a lot of other stuff we're going to be doing, but now we have some knockback um, and our zombies chase. Yeah, cool. Um, if you guys like the video, subscribe. If you didn't, let me know why. Um, if you did really like the video, comment down below. Um, next video, we're going to do a lot of new stuff. We're going to do UI, game over. Um, we're going to fix up some of the collision because right now I, I interact with the zombies myself, which isn't really fun. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you guys like the video and comment down below. Thanks.